Chain to Men has a ton of beautiful elements within it, but one that I appreciate wholeheartedly is its usage of doors and the symbolism that inherently encompasses them. Yeah, I'm talking about just normal doors, the wacky contraption that you open and close. See, the thing with doors is that they can be utilized in a lot of different ways. And if you were just to Google the meaning of what a door can actually represent, you will find a plethora of different results. So it's never just one thing, it's a multitude. And in Chainsaw Man, they are represented quite a lot. They never overstay their welcome, but when they are played upon, you can expect a ton of emotion to be poured within them. See, doors can represent both a positive and a negative. And depending on your story, you're going to utilize it within either of those directions. On one hand, you can see a door as being a stable reinforcement against something that is ill or bad or horrid within your life. However, the operation of opening and closing leads to new things. You open a door into a new chapter of your life and you close one to end that chapter off. An aspect of utilizing doors that has always fascinated myself is its representation of friendship, relationship, and the good and bad that is associated with it. I can give you a very simple demonstration right now. If you were to open up a door for your friend, you'd most likely open it all the way. You have full trust and full faith in your friend. However, if you were to open your door to a stranger, you may be curious, you may be cautious, you may be alerted. So you would slowly open that door to a position that you feel comfortable within. And while this all sounds like nonsense, if it's utilized within a symbolic way, this holds a ton of power and value. Chainsaw Man is no different as it uses its doors very intelligently. It doesn't give you too much of the information. Instead, it allows it to linger and fester within the background until the time is right. And there's a lot of ways that it does it. The first and most important one that we should look at is Denji's personal door. If you are only an anime watcher, this door has most likely piqued your interest. This door for Denji represents trauma, but it's not that simple. To understand how this personal trauma door was built in the first place, you kind of have to unravel Denji's past and what he's been through and the reason why it's been built to begin with. What is it keeping him safe from? What is it protecting him from? We know it's trauma related, but what does that trauma actually inhibit? Denji's past is turbulent to say the least. It is horrifying, disgusting, and no individual should ever have to go through it. But do know, and I need to preface this, that this all happened while he was a child. His mother passed away within an accident. His father was an abusive drunk, and so much so that Denji had to do something that would create this door. An event that would spiral his life into a lonely decay until Pochita arrived. Now, because this all happened as a child, trauma develops very differently. It's not as accessible. It's more deep rooted. It's more parasitic and it develops alongside those core developments that a child would normally have. And this is the biggest problem when it comes to childhood trauma. A super simplified example I can give you is that if you were to trip over while your shoe was untied, you would learn from that one incident that you need to tie your shoe or you're going to trip over. Now ramp that up into something so traumatizing and life altering that it sticks with you for the rest of your life. It's going to grow with you as a child. And if it is not looked at early upon, if there is no psychologist or therapist or someone that is willing to aid and help and heal that trauma, it only roots itself deeper and it becomes so entangled with those core developments that it's almost impossible to get rid of. So what is the best way to protect yourself from that trauma, from that experience, from the hardships that will leak into your everyday life? You forget about it. You try to move on. You block it out of your memory as much as possible and that is exactly what this door represents. A literal memory seal that is hidden away behind a door. That is all of Denji's most traumatizing experiences that left him alone within this life. Because this door remained for so many years, because Denji had no one to rely on, he had no friends at the time, he had no one to help him with it, it festered, it grew more and more. And the lifestyle that he was unfortunately left within did not help it either. He was continuously abused, he was manipulated, he sold his body, he could not eat or drink or survive normally without sacrificing something in return. His life was beyond hard. And that is the reason why Denji is a 15, 16 year old boy that has so many problematic development issues. Why he's so goofy and all over the place and very one dimensional with what he seeks and what he likes. Why he cherishes food so much. It all stems back to his childhood and what he was not able to have. That door for him is is the worst of the worst, his own personal trauma. And Pochita is his voice of reason. And after merging with him, he would become the protector of that door. Pochita knows that if Denji were to open that door too early, when the time is not right, it could destroy him, could ruin him, it could kill him, it could completely cripple his 
life or worse. But I think more importantly, Pochita knows that it would make him sad, that he would have to feel and see his friend relive those past experiences once again. While Denji's door is a personal trauma, there is two other doors within the story that mimic a horrifying event. The first one that Denji physically has to face is Aki and the gun devil variation that he now is. Behind that door stood something that Denji never wanted to see and he couldn't believe it. This interaction is very purposeful as before Aki even reaches the door, Power recognizes that it is his scent but a little bit different and when he opens the door that's the first thing that you see is a completely unrecognizable Aki. This is the first time that Denji would open the door to trauma and this is the first time that you should realize that the personal door that Denji has is most likely going to be very similar. The third outcome is the infamous bang scene with power. This is intrusive, it's destructive and it's actually not by Denji's own wishes. This time he is overly cautious, he doesn't want to do it, he's nervous and very much on edge about the whole situation and when he opens that door he's greeted with a nervous power that's remembered his birthday and has brought a cake and before anyone can do anything Makima shoots her and kills her right in front of Denji's eyes. This scene is meant to parallel the Aki situation and show you just how hellish doors can be and the person that opens them is usually the one responsible. Even though Denji had nothing to do with Power's death he still opened that door and he still feels that personal guilt that it was his fault. The exact same guilt that he has towards Aki. Now these three things actually share a common goal. It is to break Denji in his entirety. It is a methodical process that Makima has built to get closer to Pochita. And the only way that she can do that is to inherently destroy Denji at his core, was to build a connection, supply all the things that Denji has never had, food, clothes, a house, family and friends, and then completely rip it away from him at his happiest point in life. It is an incredibly malicious goal to try and control Denji as much as possible and evidently gain full control over Chainsaw Man. All three of these events would shift to blame. Makima very quickly after Power's demise would go into assault mode. She would start to bring up everything that Denji has done throughout his life and blame it on him while also providing a threat that if he ever were to continue seeking friends or family or a relationship whatever it may be Makima would be there to destroy it, to kill it in its entirety. See this acts as more than just a threat. While it's menacing it also serves as a dead end showing Denji that he has nowhere else to go and that if he wants to live any sort of comfortable life he has to do it under the reins of Makima. What truly puts this into perspective is when she attacks his personal door, his own hidden trauma that has been blocked away and she has known that it has been there for a very long time. With all of this guilt and assault onto Denji's character and his emotion and his past that door is kicked wide open and the reveal to what that trauma is and how it actually came to be is there in the open. You find out for the first time what actually actually happen to Denji, what actually happened to his father, and the reason why that trauma was sealed away to begin with. It is as disgusting and saddening as you might think, and Makima weaponized it perfectly. This results into the full Chainsaw Man being born for the first time, the uncontrollable hero of hell being spawned, however it doesn't actually go Makima's way. While the activation has definitely been reached, the full control over Pochita and the Chainsaw Man individual is yet to be achieved, and that is something that is not easily done and never actually reaches a conclusion. See, Pochita is a very powerful individual and because of the beautiful bond that both Denji and Pochita have actually built, this is what saves him. This is what brings him back and stops him from being controlled. It is the reason why the family burger Kobeni scene is very powerful. This is not Pochita's wish, it is Denji's. So instead of falling under control of Makima's demands, instead Pochita is seeking Denji's dreams. That becomes its driving force and ultimately that saves Denji. When you put it into perspective, the one thing that saved Denji was his best friend, his family, and it is because of the hardships that they both faced, but also because of the genuine love and affection that they gave to each other. Even though these three examples covers the majority of what the doors in Chainsaw Man represent, the word hellish is also very fitting. You see, there's two other situations that use doors as a means of travel. The first one is the arrival of hell and how that arm and hand spawns is through a physical door and you probably never noticed it at first and if you did you thought it was a pretty cool design but when you get into hell when you see the darkness devil for the first time per se you will notice that the sky is littered by doors an endless amount of doors and this is meant to represent transition the realms between earth 
and hell and each door is going to represent a personal hell not for the individual but for the fear that encompasses it in this case they've gone through the door of darkness which is a primordial fear one of the most powerful to exist when you see all of this on the plate what is valuable to me is the connection that humans and devils share and that would be the door that represents them whereas denji uses a door to seal his trauma to forget about the hardships and the past devils use it to transition between dimensions Dimensions, and they can be easily seen as the hardship behind it. But just like what Pochita and Denji represent, those doors aren't eternal. They can be broken down, they can be healed, they can be opened and faced and challenged and won against. And just like with devils, they can be erased. Those doors can be forgotten, eaten even, by the hero of hell himself. I for one absolutely love how Fujimoto utilizes doors. And while it's not the most narrative defining point of interest, it's one he puts a lot of time and effort into and one that I wholeheartedly appreciate. However, I would like to know your thoughts on all of this right now. Thank you.